Clubhouse Master Planning uh, Project Team. And I just wanted to introduce some folks who have been working on the camp committee for a little over a year um, and coming up to the point that we're at right now. Uh, Mike Kamick, back in the back. Steve Trivi, Joe Foreman, <coughs> Gary Hannon and Mary Hannon, Rick Paulson, Mike Harris, Ed Reich, Bob Stanger, Jeff Stocks, Deb Vanderlees, Cindy Carton, Jody Ware, and Barb Hendren was our board uh, liaison to the committee. Uh, so thank you for your efforts and work. Um, last September, as part of the um, Lake Master Plan on a page, um, we were tasked, the committee was created and charged to look at and conceptualize the needs of the administration. And second, to screen and interview a planning team. Um, and we chose the Farnsworth Group. Um, and they've been working with the committee now for a couple months. Since a couple months, um, and we'll be making the presentation today of the plan that they came up with for us. This has not yet been shared with the board, so this is everybody's first chance to see it, so we can get some more input, tweak it. Um, hopefully, my teacher voice, <laughs> hopefully at the November board meeting, if we can get everything ready, this will be presented to the board um, and our committee. Knock on wood, will be done. Um, so, during the spring, we created a list of wants and needs. Some of you have that. Um, we tried to visualize 30 years from now, what kind of opportunities, what kind of needs will we have as new, the next generation comes in, because we're already seeing that third generation starting to roll um, into the lake now. So really looking forward to that. So we did that. It was a tool. It was a springboard. It was just for getting ideas. Then we interviewed the design teams. We interviewed, did four teams um, and made our final decision with the partnership group. And today we have Caius, Jennison, Jeff Martin, and Nick Bruner, um, who will be making some excellent points tonight <laughs> as they share their presentation with you. I'm going to ask you to hold your questions to the end. The presentation is short um, because I, I think a lot of your questions will get answered as they go through. Um, so we will save questions to the end. And I do want to remind you that this is a 10,000 foot up looking down plan. There are no budget numbers attached to this plan yet because we haven't prioritized the phasing and what needs would be the most urgent to do first. So once the plan gets kind of understood, that gets presented to the board, the board makes decisions about priorities, the budget committee sets budget, then a new committee gets together and we design and figure out how we can pull this off uh, with the financing that we have. But we are not at that stage today. We are, and we aren't picking colors of doors. We aren't picking colors of siding. Um, everything that we have is just rough, roughed up models so that we can get an idea of the size and the scope of how and scale of how everything will fit into our area. So no budget, no schedule. <laughs> so we'll figure the budget out once the priorities are set. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is good. This works. You're all here at the back. Yep. There are a lot more of you here than we had imagined. And we had imagined kind of sitting, in, sitting down and having an intimate conversation with you. So in order to make eye contact, I think we really need to stand up and, and, and kind of do it this way. So we were engaged to do master plan. So that's a 10,000 feet look down on the site, work out what the possibilities are, look at the wish list, work out how to fulfill that wish list, um, make sure that what we're doing is realistic, and make sure it really fits and belongs at Africa Canyon Lake. And, and that's 
was the committee really kind of emphasized that that needed to be the case. So we came up and we, went with, we met with the committee and they went through the wish list. And they spent a lot more time telling us the history of Apple Canyon Lake and Apple Canyon kids and a sense of what this community is like, how they feel this community might be changing, um, where things are going, and what we need. And, not, and it really wasn't about, we need a room to do this. It was about, what will work for this place? What does this place need to work with the next generation and the generation after that? And how can we maintain the experiences of those generations to be like the, gen like the generations that have come so far? And, and keep that consistency. And that consistency of experience is a sort of common theme. So if we change something, we have to put it back so that you know a kid can still climb up the tower when they're six and get to the top and get out of the That's an important moment. So we want to make sure that those kinds of childhood moments fit in the new map. So I'm a designer. Um, not from around these parts, you can maybe tell from my voice. Um, Jeff is a landscape architect, and, and Nick is a, a young architect. Um, and we've been working on pulling all this together. We have a mixture of hand drawings and a sort of live 3D model we're going to show you. And we'll walk you through the process that we went through to get to where we are. And then we're going to show you where we are. So this is the site, and the, since it's a site and not a building, I'm going to hand the mic to Jeff. I, I can use this one. Uh, can everyone hear me? Yes. Great. Um, what was so intriguing about this project, and what still is, is we're not just looking at a building, but we're looking at a whole area. So our study area just. So everyone's clear is um, the existing building, the pool, but everything within that yellow line. So we're starting to look at what do we do with future parking lots? Uh, what do we start to do with roadways? Um, how do we handle the existing building? We even started to look at vegetation and how we're gonna handle that. So all this will kind of um, come into focus as we take you through the plans. But just so everyone understands, the yellow is kind of the limits of our study area. history. <laughs> so this is showing a picture um, from, the, from the color of the picture and from the shape of the pool. This is a while ago. Um, but it shows you know, all of the activity happening in this part of the community. Um, so there's something going on on the British Green, whether that's one of these early art fairs or the craft fair, but it really kind of shows the building, which has not changed one iota. And it, it's probably had additions since then, but it hasn't really changed. Um, and the activity center here. Um, this is an early picture up of the, of the bluff, and you'll notice that the vegetation then is very different from the vegetation now. You know, the trees were, were, were not blocking the view of the tower at that point. Um, and um, they, if you think about taking that, that nature trail around the headland, it's through dense trees now. And, and now that originally, none of those were there. Not many houses in this picture. The reason we like to show this one is some of our first impressions when we came were the views um, from this peninsula. And the one that really capture, captures our attention are, it's that long, I call it the long northwest view. I think you're all familiar with it, but this shot just captures it perfectly. So when you start to see some of our designs, the way the building's oriented, a lot of that takes views into account. So this is our, our 10,000 
big view of our site. It's pretty much everything in this picture. Um, and these, if you think about the series of pictures you've seen, they're kind of like watching a geography textbook. There aren't people in them, and there aren't kids in them, and they don't really show the life of the place. And actually, we spent some time looking through all of your Facebook pages and everything else to see what happens here and really get a sense of, 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 of those. And uh, staff here shared some photographs with us. And that was, was important. It, it kind of gave us a sense of what happens here, how people use this space. Um, I'm from London. And when I was a kid, we would go to grandma's. And when we went to grandma's, it meant boats and outdoors and big family get-togethers and manners <laughs> and meals where the whole family was around one table, even if that meant adding a kid's table. And it was a completely different experience from being in London, in the city, and going to school and all those things. It, it was you know, having the outside available to, to me changed me as a kid. And we want to make sure that you know, this natural environment and that family-centered activity are things that we are focused on as we're looking at design. So, what was the list? Never mind. <laughs> we can skip. So, skipping to the wish list, um, they've asked us to look at renovating and updating this, this building, um, how it could expand to include more community space, how the offices could expand, but perhaps just as important, how to update the look and feel of this building. And you know, I think that a lot of this building can be used in the future, it can be updated. I don't want to tear everything down and start over. I want to use what's valuable and fits that we have. Um, the tower and tree house, uh, its original purpose, to go up and see your plot of land, is completely obscured at the moment. Um, but there's an idea that we would put that, that, that experience of a kid climbing the tower, a, a young kid, when, Know, gets all the way up there. That's actually an exciting thing. We've had a couple of family get-togethers with my family at a state park where that's tradition is we take the kids out of town. Um, providing a family pavilion, somewhere you can have a big family picnic, and then a playground next to it. Um, uh, we're getting into site. Back to you. What, that's what's so great about this is we're going to go from market building to site, but again, all this stuff is is integrated. So again, it's, you're going to see things we're doing with roads and parking. They're not huge departures, but we think they just enhance the site, enhance the arrival experience. Um, and again, what hit us is is the the nature of this site. Um, it's when you come down the road, it's seeing the oak trees. We want to work with that. Um, we do want to look at options, you know, to preserve those specimen oak trees, um, but also to maybe clear out. There's a lot of honeysuckle. There's a lot of underbrush. Clear that up. Open up some of those views. Kind of going back to that photo we saw, you know, from 1974 that showed more of a savanna look. Um, strong pedestrian connections. One of the best parts of our walking tour was when we went on the walking trail, and just to get down near the water's edge. Um, that's a great experience, and we've got a couple ways of expanding that. So if someone wants to go for a walk, they can go for a small walk, or it can be an enlarged loop, which you'll see in our plans. The other thing we've tried to incorporate, um, which was on the wish, wish list, is uh, sustainable features. So you're going to see different things in here, from the building to what we do on the site, or maybe we can use um, uh, pervious paving, uh, maybe we can incorporate uh, a bioswale uh, for stormwater retention. Small little things we can do, but it goes back to the nature of the site and trying to work with it and preserve you know, this wonderful you know, community that you have. Um, it's kind of funny, um, Caius and I, when we um, actually put this sketch together for our interview, and sometimes some of our first thoughts as designers, sometimes are some of our best thoughts. And this one always kind of stuck, um, where we said, what if we worked with what we had, but kind of created a village? 
So if you see in the middle, you see a large central commons with purple boxes around it. And when you see our later plans, keep this one in mind. <clears throat> I mean, the idea there was that we would create a village green somewhere which was the center of the community that had these other amenities around it and some of those spaces would be future amenities that are not on the wish list yet. But we don't even know what they are, we just need to make sure we have a space so that when somebody says we should have a, we have a place to build it that fits because this is you know, town planning so we need to kind of Think past the immediate needs and plan for the future. So then we, uh, working with the committee, came up with, was it four Did I just steal your thunder? That's fine. No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's good. I, I'm used to it from the past. <laughs> no. uh, we came up with about, was it four options, four or five options, um, and this one really um, hit home with, with the committee. Um, again, you're starting to see uh, the village green, use my pointer here, the village green right in the middle, um, the yellow, that's the existing building, you know, Kaya's talked about how can we preserve that, potentially adding on to it. Um, we talked about a family pavilion, and then that later evolved, and you'll see in the final plan, um, a children's playground that happens right next to it. The other thing we thought about is if we do have a need for um, you know, events that are happening back in here, could we make that experience going from the parking lot to the building, you know, maybe it's a tree-lined walkway. Um, so it's a, a little bit nicer of a walk through here up into the, into the town center. Um, you're also starting to see us hint at starting to remove some of the vegetation in there that's more of the invasive species. Again, preserving, you know, the oak trees in there, but opening up those views and underneath, coming back in, and starting to restore you know, native habitat in those areas. One of the things that was central to all of the designs we did was the ability to play with it so that you don't have to spend money to do everything on the plan all at once. You can phase the work on the building, you can phase things in as you need them, as the community decides, yes, we're, we're ready to, to, to expand the park. Even with the building, you know, we can work on what they have and um, build new, or you could build the addition, then move the office staff into it, then work on that piece, and you can phase that um, depending on how, whether funds are available, and just just not get locked in too much. This is a plan that needs to be able to fit various different types of budget. This is an early sketch model of that village green. Now, this is a building that doesn't exist and may never exist. It's a placeholder for something in the future. This is an open family pavilion. We've got some playground coming in the next plan next to it. This is the existing clubhouse, re-imaged. And then this is additional community event spaces uh, beyond that. And with the new, with the tower, starting to think about relocating the tower a little bit closer to the lake, because right now it's, it's basically would sit with the new building when we go in. The tower does have an important function. It holds the antenna for all your internet. True antenna. We have, I'm gonna have you Nick jump ahead um, on this slide. This shows the whole study area, but this one I'm starting to zoom in on the west side. Uh, we have, when you're, afterwards, uh, we've got the full site plan on a board uh, that we printed out. We'd be happy to, to go through that with you up close. Um, but again, here you're starting to see a lot of the things we've touched, touched on in those earlier um, rougher sketches. Uh, again, coming in, coming down the road, and coming into this large village green. Um, we're starting to show um, there's a grass lawn in the middle, so when there's the ice cream social and the different events that happen out there, this whole area could potentially be blocked off and it could almost become like a town plaza in there. If we wanted to look at sustainable features, um, this little checkerboard pattern 
that becomes special paving that handles rainwater better, or we could just do it all on asphalt too. There's going to be you know things we're going to have to run up and down the flagpole and design. Um, but moving you know into the site, building A, that's for the most part our existing building that we're in right now. Um, and this is the new building um, on the back. Again, that that northwest view really kept coming back to us very strong. It's very important. How can we take advantage of that? Um, one of the neat features we have is there might be times when there's people coming uh, to the swimming pool. They can access in this way. There might be an event going on in the back. So how do we, you know, not necessarily commingle those two events? Those times, those people may have to be. Um, separated. We want to create a very attractive, we call it a promenade, a walkway that goes to the back side of the building. That could also serve to handle you know, small delivery trucks. If there's an event back here that needs catering, um, that could drive back in here. But the intent is that should look very walkable, very pedestrian, very natural. Um, on the back side, you're seeing a series of, there's a deck and a lower terrace back in here, and Caius will get into this when we talk about the building. Uh, again, taking advantage of those views of the lake. Might be an opportunity for an outdoor, larger outdoor gathering area um, right in here. Um, that could see about 150 to 200 people if there was a need for an outdoor wedding. Again, wonderful views. Um, we do have to remove some trees, um, so if if there is a desire to have outdoor weddings, it might be nice to plant a couple of new oak trees that go in there. Um, they take a while to grow, but you know, if we start them now, if again, it's thinking down the road for the next generations. Um, on this one, uh, we've the tower, we've actually moved it down closer to the water's edge. The idea being that you can access it from the trail, but also from um, up on the high area. There could be a bridge going over to that. And we've got some sketches showing that. Um, still holding on to the fire pit. Um, and then just a few other features on this. The family pavilion, again, oriented in the same way to take advantage of that long northwest view. You can see the children's playground right here. And then this large open green area, future building or just permanent open lawn space in that area. Uh, we can still get a flower out of it from the tower to the fire pit. <laughs> we saw that set up. <laughs> um, you see the, again, here's the tree line walkway going to the parking lot, and Nick, you want to hit the east side now. Um, again, that goes through the parking lot. This shows taking down the fire station and converting that into parking. Um, that can be for the boat and trailer parking or even overflow parking if there's events. Um, even looking at the golf cart storage barn and potentially utilizing that if need be for some over, overflow parking. Um, way in the future. Probably. It is. This is all way in the future, but this, when we showed that yellow line around our study area, this gives you a roadmap that we can now, you can now start to phase what improvements you want to make, what's it going to cost, how do you want to you know, implement that. Um, one of the other things that came up was a, they wanted a connection over to the tennis court. Um, and we can also take advantage of this trail, this ATV trail that goes down to the golf course. That becomes that bigger loop, that if people can now start to walk down the trail, come this way, come up, come through the parking lot, through a tree-lined loop right here, it just adds a little bit more to those that want to walk a little bit further. Um, so I, that's enough I've talked on, on the site. I'm gonna hand it over to you now to get into okay. some of the building features. Oh, yeah, I forgot, we got a few images. Um, on the playground, um, this image stuck out to the board, and I think this really captures some of the things that make this place, place special to everybody. Uh, this is a nature-based playground. Um, so, you know, I think we can create something iconic like this that sits right next to the family pavilion. Again, this could be down the road, but how do we create something that really complements the site. Again, we showed you the, the ability to have about 150 people to 200 people to be able to be set up outside with views out to the lake. And actually, the, the building is set up so there's a, a kitchen with immediate access for that area. And those 
you know, that, that patio connects to it. So if you've got an outdoor event, it's, it's, it's more than just this space. There's this space, a large patio, and then the kitchen and the restrooms in the building are immediately available to, to that group of people. Again, that just showing the events that you currently have, but if we could repurpose the, you know, the driveway out front into more of a, a town plaza, just to make that event even more special, but still be able to park cars. Um, I forgot to get into the numbers. Um, I think right now there's 30 plus or minus spaces out front. With our new concept, it's about 35 to 37 spaces that we could park around that town plaza. <laughs> They know what it looks like. <laughs> and the walking trail, um, we had a lot of discussion of, um, you know, should that become paved? Should that become left the way, the way it is? And Caius and I, we kept coming back to, it's so charming the way it is. Um, I think we can make expansions elsewhere. I would leave this, so a little kid can run down the path maybe get to the tower, but keep that sense of adventure with it. And I want to see the honeysuckle cleared out, but keep the oak trees. But I don't think if we come in and drop in a, a paved path in this area, it would do it justice. I think it needs to stay natural, low key, and fun for kids. <laughs> Intrepid six-year-olds think they're a pirate stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so this is kind of a building. Um, and actually, Cindy sent us a sketch with this idea that if we're, ha if we're having to move the tower anyway, take it off the headland, connect it so that you could go up the tower from the trail and up onto the top of the headland, and have a tree house up there amongst the trees that connects to the tower. I mean, it's not really used as an observation tower anymore. It's really a play experience. So let's make it a play experience that's fabulous. And it still has a radio antenna on it. <laughs> so now we're starting to look at the building. And you know, this building was designed in 1969. There was a fireplace there in, the, in those four columns. I would love to know how that drew and whether it worked well. Um, but this has been you know, a community center for a very long time, and there's no reason to change that feel and the things that go on in this building. We want to modernize and increase the office space. And we want to look at how this space gets used when more than one activity is set up in it. So at the moment, we've got enough space for three different groups to have, to have things happen. <coughs> They will annoy each other. Um, so in looking at the design of expanded facilities, we, we looked at you know, what's the biggest event we would want to be able to have when we kind of designed an event for 250 people in a big space. We made sure that we had lots of little spaces and medium-sized spaces so that you've got lots of programmable space and that those spaces are flexible in the way that they're used and the way that big they are. We also looked at how you access all those spaces. So if you have a big event with 250 guests, you can still come in, come downstairs without even going anywhere near any of those people and get to the basket weaving class or your yoga class on the other level. Um, so yes, it's a two-story building. It fits into the slope of the hill and uses that view. Um, but it does that because it allows us to separate out different activities within the building and make it more functional and more flexible. And then as to what it looks like, I think we've got a pretty firm view that we should look at changing from the sort of shingled look and come up with something that fit with other buildings in this neighborhood, if you like, and create a, an impression that befits the town hall of this community. 
So this is still the bathhouse swim. So we're connecting over the gap, over the gap between the two, and this is still the office. Um, we're re-roofing them, re-siding them, but those structures can remain and be useful for another couple of generations. If we come back into this portion, um, some bits of it need to be remodeled. If you're gonna have a room for that many people, you need less columns, you need more height, and it's much harder to reuse some of this structure. Since the building's getting bigger, we don't have that root squares between the pool and the building anymore to get to the back. Um, so we wanted to create a bigger walkway that gets you to the back without having to go through the building, without even having to kind of feel like you're entering the building. Um, there's a patio and a way in here. There's an overlook on this side here. This is a patio outside the big community room. This is the fire pit, and then off in the distance would be the tower. So all of those spaces are connected, and it's a sort of easy straight route, and it's going to, you'll be able to see where you're going. So. This is the existing community building. Kind of comes a little bit further. Like I said, we'll probably not be able to reuse this piece. And then the new community building connects to it and then has an extra level. So this is the view from the pool. And these are you know, my sketches. They are, you know, they're done off three, three dimensional models. I don't have, I'm not sort of playing with the size of things. But I'm trying to be kind of vague on the materials and, and kind of give you a sense of materials and colors, but not lock into anything at this point. So this is the view across that long view back up to the building. So now we have a building which is commanding that hillside. It's not hidden anymore. Um, we have the pool here, there's the gazebo. There's the pool house, the entrance track is back in here. You have you know, community events going on at one level, community classroom events perhaps going on at the, at the lower level or a supper do. They both have outdoor spaces available to them, to the side and below. And we're connecting to you know, the idea of having outdoor events as well. And you know, we have a kitchen in the lower level that could be servicing this and then we have a, a, a warming kitchen just for, like if you were bringing in catering for the big room above. Connecting across into the tree house, down the tower or up the tower. And a fishing pier. Apparently there is one sailing boat. <laughs> this, is, this is actually Amaryllis, that was my grandpa and, grand and my grandmother's boat. So I needed to sketch it in, in, in the long to be visiting. So this is from the, the 3D model. And that's looking at the community building. We've got basically a big room up here and a number of community rooms down here. We've got, I think, a meeting room and three program spaces, but we can shut them off from each other uh, and have those classes be separate. And there's, there's a kitchen just like we have here, the services those spaces, and an elevator to get down. <coughs> so, that's it. How long was that? Was that 30 minutes? 35 minutes. Okay, all right. So now, questions, answers. Like we said, no budget questions, no schedule questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, schedule wise, we can let you know that. We're probably not looking at shovels in the ground as even a possibility till 2019. So this is, there's lots of planning and work to be done before we start and, building. And this is the right time to be showing the view because since it's that far out, we get the right input and we need to change direction slightly or something, <coughs> or, or there's something we didn't think of. Now, this, this is great, this is a, a lot of mining. 
looking at it as it's here. Yes? I got a couple questions. What's okay. the next step? The next step is this plan gets presented to the board. Um, the board then sets the priorities as to what do we do first or what do we focus on first in the plan and then budget and then design team. Well, because Mike, I've been in the business for 40 years and my concern is when you come in with a conceptual plan like this without a budget, when the budget's finally put to it, there's a big disappointment in that I, because it's way more than I, I people agree. envision. Yeah, that. and I think we'll, we'll, we'll give the board enough information that they can prioritize based on an under, a broad understanding of the cost. Well, I believe if you're working with a contractor, a sizable contractor, you could put a budget on that whole concept right now in its current form. Yes. I, I, can't, I can tell you when we started with our wish list, right. we made a wish list. I and we were probably jokingly said um, 35 million. <laughs> Probably closer to 45. Covered pool, you know. We had it all of it. But this committee also kept in mind the size of the site and the size of our community and the funding that's available. And, and if you look at the plans, that's not the Taj Mahal word building out. I know, out. I, I, I mean, I know that. I'm just saying. Yeah. I, I most, actually, most, most of the people in this room don't have a concept of what, what yeah. it would cost. And I would say, they see all this stuff and you get everybody enthused about it and then you put a number to it and they say, oh my goodness. I agree with your idea of looking at the plan, basically if you like the idea, taking it to you know, getting it, getting some estimates on the basic idea, the square footages, um, that's entirely appropriate and prudent. Can we get a microphone to the question? So yes. How can you justify Something like this, uh, not that everybody wouldn't Wait. like to have it, I'm sure, but how can you justify that for the few people that are here full time? I mean, you only have activity here maybe six months out of the year. I've been here four years, and if a bomb dropped out here, you wouldn't even kill anybody. <laughs> I walk oh, yeah. the dog, and if I <laughs> fell dead, I'd still be laying on <laughs> There is nobody here, you're talking, spending $35, $40 million. No, no that's no. not. That's <laughs> you spend a dollar, whatever it is, no. you only have a, such a short window of people here. Right. So just to just to you know, just don't even let them yeah, just one second, please. Please stand also. Yeah. Oh, no, I was just going to ask and going along with this gentleman's question. Where did we arrive at the number of 250 people for an event? <laughs> yeah. yeah that's I, I, I mean, I've been here since 99. I've been through the code. And I don't, I don't think we, I mean, how many weddings have we had here? Well, and part of the and part of the reason, and again, 250 people was a wish. Realizing as we budget and build, it may or may not hold 250 people. But we have no opportunities to host weddings at this point. There, it, it's not viable. There's no room. There's not enough space. Um, most of most most people who are having weddings now want a large So these ladies are saying there's been many weddings. Okay. Um, so let me just clarify. Um, there we do rent the clubhouse for weddings. Um, the fire code in this room is 250. So I always and we get a lot of requests for large weddings. I always tell them that a comfortable wedding in this room is about 150 to 175. So we know that people want the room for weddings of that size. Now that's we haven't that's not the goal to have weddings here, but um, you know that's just kind of what people and community request. Community events we do, and the community events. Look how many people we try to feed for ice cream social, um, pancake breakfast. We could do a lot more. And our goal isn't to have banquets for 250 all the time, but if we had, a, you know, some space that we could break up or use for, you know, different purposes. So, 
This, this room, this little room is 250. The fire code is 250 and it is tight in here. And it's just, it's not well suited for a large scale um, event like that. We had 130 at our wedding and it was tight. But it was beautiful. <laughs> Most beautiful. But it is a gorgeous, it is a gorgeous yes. site. It's a yes. perfect spot. But I have a, I have a question here. One moment, um, Wally. Hang on, hang on. I have a question that uh, yeah. I heard uh, a while back that if they took the dam down and went up the road and up the way, they could make more property available and make a bigger lake. What happened to that? <laughs> well, that wasn't part of this plan. <laughs> That's outside our yellow dotted lines. <laughs> Okay, one second, please. So, this gentleman threw out this wild dollar number. <laughs> and I want to tell you right now, you can buy everything in our plan for under $6 million. Um, we looked at that. I don't feel that that's even an appropriate number to look at until we actually know what you want in more detail. And that's over the next 30 years. Right. So that's, that's all the phases of, of what we have. We won't be here to enjoy it. <laughs> that's, that includes yeah, buildings that aren't even thought about. <laughs> um, as you stand, we did get a request on our live feed. Could you please state your name? And please stand. Steve? Oh, sure. uh, my name's Steve. I live in Tournament Lane. I was, just, I was just curious in the past when you have something like this, whatever, be it a pool or anything, does it have to go out for membership vote? Or are you going to, does it? No. Who's saying that? So you guys, the board or the committee has it, you okay to spend six to ten, whatever it is? No. Okay. No. The, the so board, about the membership vote right now? Hmm? I keep hearing no. What's the board, the board has the ability to raise dues up to 15% without a membership vote. If you go above 15%, then the members have to vote. There's also a limit on how much we can, yeah, per year. There's a limit on how much we can actually borrow uh, in the bylaws. It can't be any more than our operating budget, which is 3.7 million. Yep. Yes, Henry Godin. I had a question about the practicality of what you're talking about. If you're talking about a large number of people in the rest, and the septic field for this area is small, how are you going to handle that? I mean, you're talking more buildings, more people here on a consistent basis. Even when we added the pool now, is that, that puts a constant load on that septic field. Now, when you have people here, you know, one of these days, the county is going to be looking. We actually have shown, we'll pull it up here, the approximate limits of the existing septic, uh, but it's something, again, that we are going to have to look into that's going to have to be factored, you know, into the design process. Um, it's that dash line, let me get my pointer. It's that dash line right there. So, you know, there's opportunities for expansion in that area, but again, that's something that's gonna have to be put in into the mix, into the design, that's part of the whole master planning process. Uh, but definitely something that we definitely took into consideration. Uh, we wanted to know where that was. And when we first, um, were hired, we were given a pickup truck full of drawings going back to the 70s. And we had to pull a lot of this information out and one of the first things we were looking for was the edge of that septic field. So, I still don't know that where all the utilities are. We don't have, you know, a good, like, tree locations. Um, all of those pieces for detailed next stages of design. There's going to be a lot of due diligence and discovery to make sure we have, we have all that information. 
Um, I just wanted to, to comment. We've not been asked here to approve any dollars. What we've been asked here to do is to approve a concept and decide what it is or give them to give camp committee feedback on ideas that they think are important to incorporate out here. And as far as only activities in four months of the year, I will strongly disagree with that. We've been out here since 2000 and the activities have grown and Cindy has put together packages almost every weekend. And people, particularly the weekenders, are beginning to look at them and say, oh, we'd like to come out here for a few days. Now, you may not see them uh, every day, but, but they're here and the activity is, is growing and they're asking for more. So I, I think we need to keep it on track, look at the concept, and then get an idea of what it is that you want and then get back to them to let them know. <clears throat> is the uh, call of the, of the CMP committee to prioritize any of this prior to giving it to the council or is it, how does it get prioritized as far as what we want to do first and what we want to do second? That would be what? the board's decision. The board should make that decision. Yes, With the, I'll let them. Without, <laughs> when does their contract end? Does it end it now? Who's got once the, we, uh, we still have to present the plan to the board. I, I know that, but after they present it, is there, are they done? Yeah, we were only hired for this month. Correct. So then, then who, who sets the, I mean, I don't know, how do you set the priorities on what we want to do first, what we want to do second? Uh, is there another committee that's going to be formed to do that? There'll, or, be, a, there'll be another committee after this that'll be design and architecture. Correct. Is there an intent to bring a contractor on board at that time to yes. look with the, yes. the architect to Correct. review the plans? Yes, sir. Will the architect control, control committee have any input in reviewing the plans? I'm sure they will, yes. Well, they did in the pool, so I wondered if they, they would in this fund. They would. I would think so, yes. Okay. Yes. Somebody will work with the architect to decide, yes. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> that was my concern also is who's making recommendations to the board and how does the board have a sense of uh, what to prioritize with this as far as the membership is concerned and if and when that's done with the swimming pool we had our costs when when it was put out there and we had designs we had the cost at that time we knew what we're headed into when it was proposed to the property owners and it would seem to me that the committee would be making some kind of recommendations after all the discussions that's been had to the board to have some basis for deciding what the priorities are, given the fact that the board's going to change probably three members each year before this project gets underway. That was Marge Clark. I should Peter Taylor. Peter Just Taylor. Just comments about the uh, pedestrian traffic from the parking lot to the buildings. It's beautiful the way you were drawing that out, but it's probably not realistic that you don't have a drive to drop off the passengers to uh, go into the new building. What, what else? If the weather won't always be nice, and you always won't always have young people that don't use a walker or a cane. It probably needs to be a road. You mentioned that there would be an off of a road that a delivery truck could get in there, but it really needs to be a horseshoe so that you could drive through, drop off your passengers, and go back to the parking lot. So, in driving here, this is, this is a drive circle. So you can drop someone off right at the door, and then get to that driveway back. It's, it's very much like you have now. So we're not, we're not excluding cars from here on a daily basis. 
Caius, could you please use the microphone? Absolutely. Thank you. So the the village commons area D in the middle there. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, that's still a driveway. You can still drive around to the front door, drop someone off. It's just that we're, we're making it a special place that you could block off when you have events, um, like the craft fair, um, things like that. There's still 37 cars, too, that can park around that. So I think part of it, we've rendered it in a way that it looks different than the other road, that we do want this to look like a potential special place. Um, this could be, a, again, if we're looking at uh, permeable paving, going back to the request of sustainable features. Uh, but again, this might all just be asphalt, but the ability is there to drive, drop people off, and even park close to the building as you do now. taken in as far as clearing land out and all that because you know you want to interact and all that so i'm sure hopefully all that's been taken into place and, and with the roads going around how you're going to have to build things up okay i'm just you know we haven't showed you the model i was wondering if you want to pull that out oh, oh this, what is this let's let's um take you on a journey through this in three dimensions can i ask you to use the microphone please if you want this one there oh. you go yeah, put your mouth right on it, Caius. I'm going to jump to scene one and just kind of orient them from the beginning. So there you are looking at the site. You can see the, the um, town square in the center, the village green. Um, you can see the existing pool parking. Um, it's over a, a visual, uh, over an aerial photograph, so you can see the cove here. And this is the existing clubhouse. We are here. So we have a, you know, a family pavilion that's open-sided. It's a pavilion. It's for family picnics. There's a playground next to it. Um, we still have that sort of grassy area down there. Uh, we're looking at some bioswales to improve the drainage in this area. And the parking with the tree line connector comes in here. So there's the tennis courts way up there, and here's the pedestrian way to the to the back with the fire pit and tower and the green event space in the center. It, and that's that area where you were talking about. You can see we're going to need some sort of retaining wall maybe similar to the stone wall that's down near the marina you know to anchor the side of that drive going to the back so yeah we, we did look at the grades it's uh and the the, great, the the amount of area we have that's flat and, and right to build on we want to actually keep and not put buildings on it so we're, we're kind of pushing everything everything back into the existing space so but having the opportunity to have a delivery truck or even an ambulance come down this, this side um, was really important and we think it's important to get that, um, that, that retainable build up. And also it would be nice to, you know, we're clearing this out so and showing views out this way and up to the building as well. So I mean, this is not really the, the back of the building anymore, we have an entry on that side as well. So then, you know, as you arrive Coming down the driveway, you come into this. There's the entrance to the building. There's the pool on one side. This is the offices. And beyond, you can see the community space and the, and the town. And the uh, family pavilions around. Right, 
from the pool, and this is the, the goat down there? The zebra, okay. Um, that's the existing pool building with a new roof on it, connecting to the new roof that's over the rest of the existing building on this side over here. Then we have this chimney element, which is actually uh, a, hiding a staircase and the transition between the two buildings. And then the upper community room and the community rooms below. View from the boat. So you can see the upper balcony and then a deck outside there. You could have classes out there. There will be a railing and steps. There are in my sketch. <laughs> now this last rendition here gives a much clearer picture. Of I can't believe we didn't do this before we yeah. did questions and yeah. answers. <laughs> we only just forgot the one thing Nick has worked on like all week. <laughs> Yeah, the apple in the pool. Question. Hi, I'm John. I um, I want to compliment you on this plan because the beauty of it is the fact that we can still conduct our business as an association to provide recreation and do this in phases, uh, which will have less impact on our budget and less impact on our homeowners, and we can still enjoy our lake. So I think it's a great concept. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rich Persula. Uh, as I understand it, the, the existing building now will be used mostly for offices, meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, the restrooms, we're keeping those. File storage. Well, some real We've worked at a place for file storage and everything. Mm -hmm. well, we've expanded it. And then the new addition will be more for events, things like yes. that. Okay. Um, that walkway between the pool and the current building, yes. does that go directly into that back building, the addition? Ah, okay. Yeah, so, so actually that walkway connects. Into the microphone. They can't hear him in the back. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah, the walkway in that, that he was just looking at gets you to an office entrance, to an office into the the upper level community space, and then into a stair and elevator to use the downstairs community space. So that those two spaces can be separately, separately used with sort of different flows of people. Uh, but there's some reticence to using that as an entrance to that expanded building to the new portion if there's activities going on at the pool. If you had, you had a wedding there, right. you don't want people. So if you have a wedding there on a day that there's, the pool's occupied, spin us around. So you have people come down here, right. away from the pool, and you get us to the uh, entry on this side with the, yeah. with the chimney and the so, yeah, That's gonna be so, a long exposed walk. So this is this is a gate, so you don't see the truck at the time. It's not that far. It's it's not as far as we are here. It's about over there now. So you're coming in to a reception room that connects into those rooms. The same it's the same space that you're coming to on the other side. So you can really change the separate those two flows. I know we've got a lot of steep slopes out here going toward the uh, uh, toward the restaurant, toward that little cove in there. Uh, is this going to require a lot of land moving around there? Because I know we have a lot of bedrock. Uh, it's not too deep under the. I mean, like building a lower level on that expansion. So we are uh, we're, we're cutting in. At, at the back of that room, if you like. I mean, it, it cuts into the hill a, a bit. Um, it's not really that much. The hill, the natural hill, uh, cuts it as a, at an angle. Um, so, but there would be some, and there would be some cost to that. But I don't, I don't see that as insurmountable. That's a problem. Okay, because I know we do have a lot of bedrock. 
still not very far on either side. Right. I mean, again, we're under 10,000 ship view, but we've also thought about, you know, if I'm getting a building this size, I'm gonna need to have a school. Have I got something, have I got a number in mind so that I'm, I'm covering getting the water up the lake so I can have a sprinkler system in through it? And I, can, I get this, can I get deliveries to it? So that it's, it's, we've, we've made sure that the practicalities are, are, are things we've thought about. Um, you gotta put your mouth right on it, right, okay. right there. You go. <laughs> so it's a very practical building. We've thought about everything from fire sprinklers to delivery and and separating out these parts of people. Is the sprinkler system incorporated into your plan? Yes. It's incorporated into the number. The cost. Right. The cost. The sprinkler. <clears throat> The sprinkler of the existing building as well, yes. yes. I mean, like John, I do like the concept of this. I think it's beautiful. And I think it, uh, it's using a lot of um, uh, the attributes of the land that we have here. Uh, what I'm curious about is we're talking about bringing this to the board in November. What question is going to be asked of the board in November? <laughs> it's first of all it's about the, the plan do you like this concept and i think you have to go back to the same problem the committee had we had to keep rising again because we kept trying to get down to the details it's do you like the concept do you like the idea of better utilization of prime real estate right now Many of you don't know what's beyond this building or the pool down below. And so we're just trying to get ideas and get your input on ideas on the whole concept. And like the committee, like the idea of creating a community area um, with several different options in that based on what doesn't work for us right now? So what I, I can't give you Rich an answer what the proposed question is. I think it's more of an understanding. We're not, you know, unlike the pool, you had one, you had a pool. Now we're talking about an area. So, you know, we need to know, does the board like the concept? And then, you know, when you hear the priorities of each of the buildings and uh, facilities, are those priorities to you? We're not saying yes, go ahead and build, renovate the clubhouse and don't exceed this much money. We're not anywhere near that yet. So, I don't think I need it, I have a loud voice. Beside the meeting today and Sunday, are there going to be any other um, activities that are done to get more feedback from the property owners? Um, well, we one, we're on live feed right now. We're posting it on the website right now. Um, the article, and I mean, you know, in the Apple Core, we have several articles, drawings, where the PowerPoint will be on the website access. Um, all along, the committee has said, we want to communicate with our membership. We want to hear from our membership. Okay. And so I think all along during the months that the committee has existed, we've kept people posted on what we're doing. And, and you gotta go back to the charge. The charge, again, was very limited to uh, conceptualize uh, utilization, um, administration building, clubhouse area from the point to the fire, old firehouse. So that's only where we're at right now, okay? I would say that one important thing to remember is that we're trying to design a concept that fits not the generation that's here right now, but two and three generations and make sure that they have the same, the, the right level of amenities. 
that this place is strong and popular. What we heard was that the population of people who are here all the time is growing. And we felt that when we, when we designed, we felt that we needed to create a civic center for this village um, and make that, make that you know, public space rather than have an office and, you know, and a couple of rooms, but really create something that was the sort of center of activity, pride, whatever you want to call it, and something that adds value to the community. One quick question, will this final site plan be on the website? Yes, everything's on the website. I mean, we can scroll through it and spin it Microphone, around. Microphone, please. You can't hear. Uh, can George's on? question is, will this site plan, site plan be on the website? Yes. I mean, mainly so, uh, you know, my wife couldn't make it today, so I could sit down there on the computer and spin this thing around. This page here an answered a lot of my questions. I don't know okay. Well, we're, we're using a, a 3D program to show you this model, but we can export a movie from that that you'll be able to put on the website and have, and have everybody see. Just a kind of quick spin around the site so that right. you understood it in 3D. Right, Nick, we can yes. do that? Yep. can do anything. Unless there are any more questions, we will be here if you want to come up and look at plans on the, the board. If you have just quicker questions here um, before we go. Yes. My name is John Buckley, and I know you didn't appreciate my last remark probably. I got 44 years in construction. I built high rises, uh, Standard Oil, CNA, Illinois Bell. I'm not ignorant to cost. What I was getting at, yes, this is beautiful. It's beautiful. But for the amount, you can't even keep a restaurant going. Uh, to spend what something like this is going to cost, which wouldn't be six million dollars, which would not be six million dollars. Uh, to me, I just thought it was ridiculous. That's why I spoke up. I, I didn't mean to put a, I didn't mean to not insult a beautiful because I, I think this is beautiful. I, I think that would be gorgeous. I think that would be gorgeous. Uh, I don't know. That would be gorgeous. But I'm just saying, for the amount of people that are here, uh, well, you know what, John? Your comment got a lot of likes, so you're, you know, it's it's okay to bring that up. Well, yes, got a lot of them. My name is Rich Moran. I have a question. Uh, we've talked about your entire plan, and the only thing I hadn't seen is what you plan on doing with the old firehouse. I heard one comment about tearing it down. But exactly. What are you going to do with it in the meantime? Tear it down. I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> um, there are no immediate plans to tear down anything. Um, at this point, actually, right now they're actually up there working on some of the interior. The, the building has been studied. Um, the board has information. I think the engineering students came. But anyway, that's got that was an, that right now. The possibility is there if we needed expanded parking, that space could be utilized as expanded parking. Doesn't mean that we're going to tear it down tomorrow and make a bigger parking lot. <laughs> but no, but that's a possibility. They also talked about the possibility of removing the other storage area down below and moving that so that we have additional parking. Because if you've got the pool and boats and the bass club and, 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 we got a lot of traffic 
coming through. You got four wheelers, you got people walking, you've got cars, you've got trucks. We were very cognizant as we looked at this plan for a safe pedestrian, safe auto, safe everything area that we can get. Uh, I have a question uh, tagged on to what Rich Rasula mentioned earlier about people going around to the uh, uh, to the two-story building going around the clubhouse and you, in your sketch you've got a truck there so could that be a turnaround area so you could drop passengers off there for the event and then turn around and go back out um, not with the full not with the full traffic on that I don't no know. I, I i don't think it was designed for that it was designed possibly so that you could get a, a van back there with your catering it, it would it takes a three-point turn yeah. For, the, for the caterer to get in, so we wouldn't want to have guests trying to get back there and navigate that. But yeah, with the rebuild on the front, if you look at it from the front, there's still plenty of room to drop off directly in front of the building, as you do now, and park there. Mm -hmm. yeah. It doesn't look like a parking lot, but it is. For 35 Basically what we have now. With the expanded parking being pushed out. Oh, down below. Parking spaces for the grid is you could get more. Uh, more yes, you could. Yes, you could. That's much Okay. Okay. I'm going to. I want to thank Caius and Barnsworth Group for coming out tonight. So, again, we're going to be here for a little while. And again, thank you all for coming in. I know it was a busy night. <laughs> Thank you.